On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, it's time for the third attempt to free the motor vessel ever forward with a refloat scheduled on April 17th. Hi, I'm your host, Sal McCoglin, and welcome to this episode of What's Going On With Shipping. If you're new to the channel, take a second, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. So we're over a month into the grounding of the motor vessel ever forward, which sailed out of Baltimore on March 13th, we now have the third attempt to refloat the ves vessel scheduled for Sunday, April 17th, Easter Sunday. Uh, they're going to be using two high tides, one in the morning and one in the later afternoon to try to get the vessel free. So first off, let's recap where we're at right now with the motor vessel ever forward, how we got here, talk about what's been done up to this point, and then what is scheduled for the refloat attempt. So this is uh, John Scott Railton's excellent video he did on Twitter. I'll have the link here in the show notes for you. So Everforward departed from the Seagirt Marine Terminal in Baltimore on March 13th in the evening. She was helped off the berth by three tugs. She had sailed all the way from Asia through the Panama Canal. She had already offloaded containers in Savannah. She had now offloaded in Baltimore and she was departing out of Baltimore Harbor here, heading southbound toward Norfolk. She was scheduled to go into Norfolk, offload in Norfolk, and then proceed to New York, New Jersey for her final offload before returning back to Asia. As you see here, she is under control. She would have a Baltimore docking pilot on board to assist getting off the berth. And now she's underway. Besides the ship's crew, she would have a Chesapeake Bay pilot on board. The ch chart you're seeing here shows the depth of water in meters. Uh, at this time, she's drawing roughly around 12 meters of water. And she's in a 15 to 15 and a half meter channel. You'll see she begins to speed up here and then heads straight out of the channel. She was going at approximately 13 knots when this happened. You're going to see a replay of it here in a second. Now, the ship was under control, making maneuvers, increasing speed as she departed. She basically field golded through the two top buoys at the northern end of Craig Hill Channel and then proceeded to come to a complete stop in water that was, again, anywhere from uh, five to seven meters in depth. Uh, to put that in the feet, she was drawing 42 feet of water, and now she's sitting there in about 18 feet of water forward and about 24 feet of water aft. The reason for the grounding, we don't know yet. We have not heard anything from the NTSB uh, on the reason for the ship to be grounded. Uh, we don't know if it's mechanical, if it was pilot, if it was communication issues. Uh, we just don't basically know. Uh, it would have been nice to hear something by now from them, but we haven't. So she has been stopped in the bay since March 13th in the ground. Now, she did not block the channel. One of the saving graces here was literally she was going so fast that she plowed out of the channel and was completely free of the navigation for ships heading up to Baltimore. And ships have been heading up to Baltimore. The only provision that's been put in place is to slow steam less than eight, nine knots by her. And you'll see her firmly aground at this point. She's pretty high up out of the water. She was high up out of the water to begin with. Uh, she was showing boot top coming in. She's about a meter higher on the bow than she is normally, but she is firmly implanted in Chesapeake Bay mud. Now, they initially attempted to try and free her on two separate attempts, one on March 29th and one on March 30th. The attempt on March 29th was perceived not to have a great deal of success. Uh, the, the salvers who I've talked to and port officials and tugboat operators all felt the same way, that there was a very minimal chance to get the vessel off on March 29th. They tried it again on the 30th because the wind had changed. They were going to have an extra two and a half feet of water coming up the bay. So they decided to go ahead and give it a try and try to see if they could basically pull her off the shoal. That proved unsuccessful. And what they've done now since then is in addition to the dredging that had been ongoing up to this point is they decided to undertake a process to offload containers from the vessel. 
So the offload of containers from a container ship of the size of Ever Forward, which is a Neo Panamax vessel, this ship was designed specifically to be able to go through the limits of the new Panama Canal locks, which opened in 2016. Ever Forward was built in 2020. We have never seen the requirement to offload containers from a grounded container ship before of this size. I mean, it's really unparalleled to do this. And it takes a lot. Special cranes had to be uh, brought in. These crane barges had to be brought in. These cranes had to be modified for the additional reach to be able to get up to this. You see them here taking the containers off on the port side, the left side of the vessel, two crane barges in operation. You'll see those flat barges taking anywhere between 15 to 20 containers off. The plan was to remove 500 containers from the vessels. Now you see those vessels, the containers are loaded in, in basically rows. And those rows usually are earmarked for specific ports. And so what they're doing is targeting specific rows of containers to take off, usually loaded ones. Loaded containers can go anywhere from five to 30 tons. The average that they assume for these containers coming off are about 15 tons. Uh, this is a pretty actually fast process they're doing right here, really surprising how quick they're able to get these containers off. Nowhere near as fast as you would in a ship to shore crane pier side, but yet still very impressive. Uh, they have to be kind of slow about this. They need people on top of the stacks to make sure these container cranes get locked into the corners. They also need, as you see here, individuals to guide the containers into position on the barges, something you don't need with ship to shore cranes typically. This operation was slow and methodical. When they initially started last weekend, they were only able to get off about 20 plus containers a day. They've now accelerated up to almost 100 containers a day. This is marine traffic showing you the operation in and around ever forward right now. You'll see several tugs heading back up to Baltimore, the Atlantic Enterprise and the Stephanie Dan probably with barges loaded with containers heading back. As you zoom in here, you'll see some other vessels in and around the area. The dredge Oyster Bay is still at work. The previous dredge, the, uh, the Dale Pyatt, was released several days ago. She's in operations down at the end of the Craig Hill Channel. Other tugs are in and around the area, moving barges and containers, working with those container cranes. And so the plan here is to finish up container operations today, Saturday, April 16th, with a plan to move the vessel tomorrow, Sunday, April 17th. Let's take a look at the plan. So the operation is planned for tomorrow, April 17th, Sunday, and they're probably going to go right around two periods of time here. So you'll see tomorrow at 624, you get the highest tide which is going to be almost a 1.3 foot tide and then another high tide at 6.46 p.m. If we scroll down here and you look at the Sunday chart here, here you go, 1.31 feet. The highest tides will be in the mornings coming up. So obviously they want to go ahead and try to go first thing tomorrow morning at 6.25 a.m. If we look at Chesapeake Bay, this is the NOAA chart right here, which gives you more accurate data about water and wind. Let's take a look here at the winds for tomorrow. So tomorrow, April 17th, winds aren't gonna be the best. They're gonna be coming out of the Northwest, which is actually pushing water out of the Bay. However, on the 18th, they come more from the East. But if we start looking at water levels, we passed really the, the peak time, which was going to be this morning, but still, you still get at about eight o'clock tomorrow morning, a pretty good tide right there. You're still about a little over 1.7 feet of water. Again, the Chesapeake Bay is more conducive to wind and weather than it is tides because it's so, so far up the bay where they're at right there at Patasco. So let's go take a look at the plans as laid out in the latest Coast Guard bulletin. So this is the latest bulletin released yesterday by U.S. Coast Guard Sector Maryland, which includes all the pertinent information in it. And let me go ahead and pull up the area in question right here. So the pulling evolution. So a pulling evolution to refloat the Ever Forward will occur on Sunday, April 17th at 2022. 
This effort will involve two anchored pulling barges and five tugs positioned around the vessel. And we'll talk about exactly where we think they're going to be. The anchored bar barges are shown right here on this chart. These are the green barges right here. Blue are the anchors. Each of these barges can pull about 300 metric tons, about 300 tons of bollard pull each. So you're going to get 600 tons of basically backward pulling force to try to drag the vessel back into the channel. Uh, the captain of the port allowance for one-way traffic at a reduced safe speed through the safety zone will cease at 5 a.m. on April 17th. So tomorrow morning, they're going to halt it. Public should anticipate one-way traffic to resume at 11 a.m. or at the discretion. So obviously, they're hoping first thing tomorrow morning to try to get the vessel free. Now, they may not be able to free it all in one shot. They may be able to pull her back out a bit and then have to reset for the evening or the next morning tide. But they're hoping to be able to get her back. Now, they'll pull her back into this turning basin up here. There's a large area here for maneuvering. Not really a turning basin, but it's a turn. It's, it's a it's a basin where the vessels turn out of one channel into the next. So there's room there to pull the vessel up there, spin her around and take her back up to Baltimore. Uh, going on here, ever uh, following the pulling evolution, if this pulling evolution to refloat the Everfoat is unsuccessful, a second pulling evolution to refloat the Everfoat will occur and the captain of port allowance for one-way traffic at a reduced safe speed through the safety zone will cease again at 5 p.m. So it'll go again for the evening one. Public should anticipate one-way traffic to resume at 11 p.m. Following a successful pulling ev evolution, the Ever Forward will anchor and ballast within the channel prior to transiting underneath the William Preston Lane Memorial Bridge to the Annapolis Anchorage. Now, it's different than what they've said in the past. So she's not going to go up to Baltimore. She's going to transit southbound and anchor south of the Annapolis uh, 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 Chesapeake Bay Bridge. Uh, MSIB will be updated following two unsuccessful attempts if necessary. One of the reasons they may be heading down to Annapolis is deeper water so that they can get divers underneath the vessel and survey the hull. Uh, they also want cleaner water. They can be in as much as they can and a little bit more open water would probably be more conducive to that. Uh, talks about salvage operations. Container removal operations commenced on Saturday, April 9th, 2022. Showed you the video of that and are now anticipated to conclude Saturday, April 16th. Currently, the allowance for one-way traffic at a reduced speed through the safety zone will continue throughout the container removal area. However, commercial vessel traffic must contact Coast Guard assets on scene 30 minutes prior to entry on VHF channel. All right, so tomorrow morning, this operation is planned. So let's talk a little bit about it. So you're going to have the two anchor barges here, 300 tons of pulling force each for a total of 600 tons, Three more, or they, they mentioned here, five tugs. Can imagine we're going to put two more tugs on the start port side pushing and then three more on the quarter here trying to pull backwards. If you remember last time, they had five tugs. They had the Atlantic Salver and the Atlantic Enterprise. Both are on location right now. Both are capable of about 70 measurement ton, uh, metric tons of pull force. And then they had one long haul uh, uh, tug, which was the War Horse 2, which was available, which could do about 120 tons. Uh, I haven't seen whether what the fifth tug is going to be yet, if it's going to be another one of the War Horse. There are three of them. Two of them were involved in tow operations. However, the other one may be coming up for this evolution for the morning. As we get more information, we'll provide it. But what I envision, again, is two tugs on the port side, the two Atlantic vessels on the starboard quarter, and then one off the stern here, kind of being the long haul pull along with the two barges. So let's take a look at some images from this scene just from the other day. So a lot of these photos are courtesy of the Maritime Innovation Safety Lab. They've done a great job catalog uh, cataloging photos and the operation here. And what you see here is they've shifted over to the starboard side of the vessel and are now removing containers off the starboard side of the vessel. Here you see the two anchor barges in place, port and starboard, uh, two anchors coming off here. Let's kind of zoom in there a little bit. There you go. You see the two anchors coming off the back of the vessel hooked onto anchor winches. Uh, there's generators on board for power. So those anchor winches, which are affixed to the vessel, will pull on the anchors. The anchors are dug into the channel. That's these buoys here that are marking where the anchors are at. They will pull on there. Each of them will do 300 metric tons of pulling force. You'll see there are four lines 
going through the chocks there affixed to bits on the vessel and you want to spread that load out, hence four lines. You don't want to do 300 tons of force on one bit. You'll rip the bit, up, bit out. So they spread it out across four points here. Same thing for this other barge. You'll see it on the port side, one on the starboard side. So really smart maneuver here. They're going to try to pull the vessel aft as they go. Next here, some images. This is actually an image from the vessel right after she grounded on uh, March 13th. And one of the things I want you to notice here is the amount of containers on the vessel, the amount of containers on the vessel there. And this next image was taken just the other day and you'll see empty cell guides right here. This shows you where they're taking the containers off. Uh, they're taking loaded containers and the way these ships are, they load containers for ports in the different cells. And so you wanna go ahead and offload them from specific cells. Same thing here, here's a uh, image from the port side quarter, the, uh, the, the left side aft or behind the vessel. And then if you look at this image here, you can see how they've put dents in the total number of the stacks here, the amount of containers that are coming off. And so they've substantially reduced the number of containers on board. So what they've done now is they're, they're in a position for tomorrow to try to get the vessel free. So I'm going to use my handy dandy Maersk Lines Lego vessel here to give you a little bit of an idea of some of the issues that are at play. So what they have done is remove some of the loaded containers. Now containers are loaded on these rows for different ports. So probably about half these rows have empty containers on board. The other half are loaded. And what they've done is removed some of them, not all of them, but some key ones from the vessel to lighten the vessel. So now they have lightened the vessel a bit. Now they haven't gone below the hatch cover. So they're just taking containers off the top deck. And now they've made the vessel substantially lighter. What they hope to do is lighten it by about 10,000 tons between containers and then ballast coming off the vessel. It's about 120,000 ton vessel. So they're taking off you know, about 8% of the total weight. Now she's still buried in the mud. So she's still sitting in the mud, but what they wanna do, and I'm gonna give you the aft end of the vessel here for your view, is what they wanna do is pull her sternwise to you. They wanna pull her out that way. Now, what they had to do was dredge a lot along the stern because the propellers, now she's a single propeller, this ship's twin propeller. She's single propeller with a single rudder. What they don't wanna do is when they pull her aft, she digs in the mud and piles up mud behind her. So they've dredged off behind the vessel so that there should be deep water behind her. So when they pull her backwards, the bottom should drop out from underneath her. As they pull her out, those tugs on the starboard quarter there want to pivot her like this and get that stern into deep water. If they can get the stern into deep water, they can fire up the engine and then they can pull her off like this. So what they've been doing is dredging off the stern of the vessel, down the, star, uh, the starboard side of the vessel, and then around the bow area here so that when the pull is initiated. When they start pulling this vessel to you, you know, they start pulling her back into the channel that way, they can now pivot her on the bow and then pull her entirely off the shoal. And that is the ultimate goal here. That is the ultimate goal here. And they'll have to assess the damage of the vessel. They've been going into tanks, sounding the tanks. What we understand is about every four hours they go in and sound the tanks. However, once she's off the mud and free floating again, they're going to have to reassess to make sure she's not leaking at all. That's probably one of the reasons they don't want to bring her into Baltimore. They want to bring her further south. If she is clear and she passes a survey from her classification society, she will either sail back to Baltimore to reload those containers or she may be told to go ahead and proceed on down to Norfolk and those containers will be loaded on another vessel for transport eventually to Norfolk and, um, and uh, New York. So that's where we're at. Uh, should be an interesting morning tomorrow. I'd recommend if you wanna watch it, I'm sure the local news channels will have links to it. I'll be sure to link them into uh, my YouTube channel. I'll put a note out when I find out where they're at. Uh, also get on to Marine Traffic, follow it along on Marine Traffic. It'll probably be your best site 
to follow along with it. Should be an interesting uh, salvage operation for tomorrow. If they don't get the vessel free tomorrow morning, they're gonna try again tomorrow afternoon. And then I imagine they will try again one more time. What they don't wanna do is continue taking containers off this vessel because it's very expensive. And the ship has already declared general average, which means that cost is gonna be shared across the spectrum of the cargo. So that's where this stands. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please, Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos. As they come out, leave a comment or a question. Uh, be, feel free to, to do that. I'm happy to answer questions uh, on this. Also be sure to share it across social media. And if you can, contribute to the Patreon page because I have to tell you that, that my props are fairly expensive for this vessel, for this show. By the way, Lego Maersk Triple E vessel came out years ago. Uh, I'm waiting for Evergreen to send me a copy of, uh, of, of their Lego vessel. They don't have one. I'm just kidding. So until our next video, this is Sal signing off.